Hallelujah. And leading up to this convention, many mind-blowing events took place. Leading up to where we are tonight, and Sister Phyllis Boyce brings us to this spot with her testimony tonight that we will read, which ties into, it ties into what the Lord gave Brother Julian before we even came to Harrisburg. That was to be read and highlighted at the conclusion of last Sunday's service, which was not done in the right way, which I will do now. Amen. And it said, for they shall come back to New York City from the mightiest meetings ever. Amen. Are you in the mightiest meetings ever? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. They shall come back from the mightiest meetings ever as worshiping Messiahs who have been newly born in the new land. You cannot stop a newborn from crying out, crying out with joy, with happiness. I have life. I have joy in my soul. Amen. 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 And it said through Brother Balomo Sr. expressed to the bride. This is Brother Coleman expressing to the bride that you, Joseph Charity Coleman, shall see them in Harrisburg and will answer any questions as a 21-year-old manifestation. It shall be. It shall happen. He shall be right here. Amen. Any question, he will answer it himself. This is the Lord's doing. This is the ministry of Jesus Christ. That David has slain Goliath. How dare you challenge the living God? He'll be here as a 21-year-old transformed son of God. Yes, it shall be. Amen. 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 And amen. Amen. But me out of the miry clay. It was not a man. It was the voice of the archangel. It was Michael. Not a man. Amen. So we salute God's apostle, Brother Joseph Coleman, who will be here to answer every question. Seven, seven, eleven. God bless you, Brother Coleman. Amen. Seven thunders. Glory. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. We appreciate the specials that have been sung tonight by the Restoration Group. The confession. What a confession. That is your confession. Michael's not coming, he's here. That's why you've gathered here. You have a revelation that Michael is Christ. Hallelujah. Pray he stood for you in heaven. He's standing for you on the earth. For two phases you stood for him. But on the third phase, Michael stands up. Praise God on the third phase, he changes bodies and he stands up. Glory to God, hallelujah, to deliver every name in the book. Amen. God bless you, Restoration Group. You sung that wonderfully. Amen. And Brother David in the group from England, Healing Rain, and how beautiful are the feet of him. We could say how gorgeous are the feet of him. That's going to be preaching here on Thursday night. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. We are saluting that ministry. How beautiful are the feet. Hallelujah. Joseph Perfection Coleman has preached for 47 years. But in this convention, Joseph Charity Coleman. Michael shall stand up in his servant and call you to the resurrection. Praise God. Healing rain is pouring down upon you, Brother Coleman. 
because the bride is worshiping praising the angels have been dispatched amen so praise god well you may be seated for a moment i'll just greet the convention amen on behalf of my wife and family and the church in england amen may god bless you all the ministering brethren may god bless you here in your churches and those that's hooked up on the internet the lord bless you around the world this is that great harrisburg 2011 convention that the three phases was waiting for and the four steps of the seven seals was waiting for amen the time of the revelation is finished the time for sowing seeds is over Glory. it's time for what brother Bam called a great big hallelujah i believe thursday night there's going to be a great big hallelujah he who sowed in tears shall reap in joy. Oh, talk about joy. Don't you love this gospel? It blows our minds out. From last Harrisburg to this year, our blinds have been completely blown out. My, the half has never yet been told. Amen. You may be seated. So greetings, amen, to God's servant, Pastor Honesty. Amen. Brother Coleman. God bless you, beloved servant of Christ. We need these new words because we can't express what's in our hearts. So we had to say, Joseph Charity Coleman, Pastor Blue Eyes, <laughs> expressions of love. Amen. And I cannot wait to shake the hand in these meetings of a gorgeous, strong, muscular, transformed, 240 pound, size 10 shoes. Hallelujah! 21-year-old manifestation of Joseph Charity Coleman. Hallelujah. You know, when I realized I was going to be preaching in these meetings, it's not by the blue War on unbelief. War on no praise. You're going to worship God with all that's within you. And while you worship, you're being delivered, delivered, delivered. And while you worship, healing rain is coming down in Westbury. Healing rain is coming down in Westbury. The transformation is going further from the eyes to the head, to the neck, to the body, to the legs, to the feet. Oh, how beautiful are the feet that will be here 07, 07, 2011. Now the fire's here now. Satan, come out of the people. Unbelief, come out. You cannot stay here. The fire's getting hotter and hotter and hotter. Glory. Invention. Amen. But when you see these spirits trying to deny the resurrection, trying to keep Jesus in the tomb, trying to say he won't rise. Amen. It reminds me, I was in a convention in 1996 in Tanzania. Our brother Beneshut was there. It was my first time in Africa. My first meetings there. And I had on my heart because it was a, a region that had been held down by six seal ministers. Amen. Six seal ministers denying the seventh seal. In other words, if you deny that Michael is here, that would make you a six seal minister. Because Michael is the seventh seal. The third phase place in Christ's adoption time. That angel is here with us in this meeting. And that flaming fire ministry and our brother Kevin Blewett working through him clearly brought us back to the words of the son of man who spoke of his uniting with god in a brand new 21 year old body a william brenham that will never be old never never have a heartache never die never be sick never never hallelujah and live throughout eternity it is not a fable. It is not some man's idea. They are the words of the Son of Man. 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. 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 Praise God, Brother Blewett. Amen. What a beautiful depiction he brought us last night of what we are about to see ourselves. As a 21-year-old transform, Joseph Charity Coleman gets ready to come forth. Amen. And unbelief doesn't matter. Demons do not matter. It is a fact. It shall happen. Say it, the Lord God Almighty. Amen, amen, amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's why we are singing and worshiping. We are in a different realm. There is no unbelief in the house of God. Amen. In the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. There is victory in the camp this morning. Hallelujah. There is a shout of the king in the camp this morning. Glory to God. And the shout has connected with the voice of the archangel. So this morning, the shout and the voice are together. Seven thunders have connected to charity. Glory to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. I'm already halfway my message now, but that's okay. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Blessed be his wonderful name. Amen. Well, God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. It certainly feels wonderful in here this morning. Amen. So I want to greet you this morning. Amen. You may take a seat. Amen. For a few moments. Blessed be his wonderful name. Hmm. God bless you. On behalf of Amen, my, my family, my precious wife, Sister Steffi, and the children and the sister church back in Belgium, we say shalom. Amen. It's a great honor to be with you. Amen. As we have connected to page 304, blessed be his wonderful name. Amen. It's a great privilege to be gathered here at the greatest convention ever. Amen. For many years we heard, we heard, we heard, but now I see. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to God. So God bless you, you wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to specially salute from all of my heart this morning. Amen. My pastor, Pastor Honesty Joseph Charity Coleman. Amen. He's my pastor. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God bless you, Brother Coleman. Hallelujah. Amen. And a special thank you for contending for 47 years, for earnestly contending for the original faith restored back by Malachi 4. Amen. And being sent as a sign. Amen. As a sign. Amen. As an echo revelation. Amen. And amen as a sign and position to the bride of Jesus Christ. So now you and I can enter and partake of that revelation in its season. Brother Coleman already partook many, many years ago. But now you and I have the privilege on page 304 to have those seven thunders, those same seven thunders uttering their voices to you and I. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But how we thank God for the sign of adoption that was sent before us. That kept the Messiahship straight. Blessed be his wonderful name. So God bless you, Brother Coleman. Hallelujah. Glory. And let me tell you, Bright, that is a scripturally proven gift. Let me tell you, critic, Brother Julian is a scriptural proven gift. Oh, yes, he is. Let me tell you, make-believer, Brother Julian is a scripturally proven gift. Hmm. hmm. 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. My God. So God bless you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. My God. So God bless you, Brother Julian. Amen. There's people here that love you. Amen. That accept your gift. That appreciate your gift. That are praying for you daily. As they pray for God's servant, Brother Coleman. Glory to God. Amen. I also want to salute, amen, of course, the whole Coleman family, Sister Joanne. Amen. God's prophetess. Amen. Sister Becky, Sister Coleman, the mother of the bride. Amen. Brother Jonathan. Brother Belomo. Amen. Senior. Brother Belomo Jr. Amen. My God. Are we blessed or what? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. You may Is that love drop down in the room? I'm not talking about a happy feeling. I'm talking about love with, with forgiveness. And tonight I am free, free, free. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. What I want to say is we have returned to our first love. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. I'm finishing. And this is out of patience, speech 1974. This scripture where Jesus was teaching Peter that love must be the motive and Christ must be the objective. If he has to come forward to feed the lambs and feed the sheep, it can't be a business, it can't be an idea, it can't be intellectual, it must be love. The love that constrains us to be united. The love that constrains us to come to one Lord one faith, one baptism, one accord, to see a 21-year-old, Joseph Coleman step forward. May the Lord bless you. But in Anton, we have a revival in Trinidad. And Brother Coleman going to come down there. May the Lord bless you. Oh, I thank God that the witness is true. I thank God that this is the right revelation. All other platforms are finished. Praise God. This is that that the prophet William Branham speak of, that the apostolic echo, echo, may the Lord bless you. That angel dropped down last night as our brother John Conte ministered to us about the resurrection and how the transformation going on right before us through our pastor brother joseph charity coleman is a very sign that the resurrection is at hand in other words we are not long for this world i cannot dwell on my problems in this world my pastor is a sign that i am leaving here this body shall put in on immortality. Amen. Amen. And that we that are alive, as he steps forward in that transformed body, a sign that we that are alive, Brother Conte said, shall be changed. And after a while, we'll be traveling like a thought to unite with those saints who have been waiting for this day and we shall lead the charge amen blessed be went to sleep amen what a love spirit trapped down into my soul hallelujah hallelujah praise god amen i can never be the same and when you leave here you will never be the same Praise God. We thank God for Brother Joseph Charity Coleman. Ma, 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 ma. What a blessing. We appreciate him so much for his stand, for allowing me to come here. Amen. Allowing all of us to come and 
be a blessing, to receive a blessing in these conventions year after year after year. One man with a tremendous revelation after the prophet. Amen? Praise God. But we were believers. We were coming. We didn't fully understand, but we were coming. We came to shout. We came to say amen. Because you were seen. Praise God. You were God's predestinated people. Before the foundation of the world. In the back part of Elohim's mind. You are ordained to be here. You have to be here. Praise God. Wherever you come from. Around the world. God called you. God chose you. God know you. Hallelujah. Satan you are finished. Because these people are going to be redeemed. Redeem, redeem. Praise God. Amen. God bless you. Amen. So, on behalf of my wife, Sister Sarah, and the church back home, just want to pass my appreciation, my thanks to our Father in the faith, Pastor Charity. Joseph Coleman. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And Sister Elaine Coleman. Sister Joan. Sister Rebecca. Brother Jonathan. We love you. Appreciate you. Praise be to God. Amen. I also want to pass my appreciation to God's faithful witness. Brother Julian Brunel. A true witness. And a help to God's servant, to God's apostle. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Can you imagine God giving us a seer, a prophet in the fivefold ministry in this adoption season? God bless you, Brother Julian. We are backing you up. Praise the Lord. Amen. A great help to God's apostle in this time, in this season. Amen. And that ministry has done quite a lot to the bride. So we want to thank God and appreciate God for his love and his mercies. And to us. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I also want to take time to appreciate all the ministers who have gone before me, stood here and ministered under the anointing. And the mighty blessings. Amen. Right from the first day, Brother Coleman's comments, and up to yesterday. What can we say about what happened yesterday? What a meeting we had. Praise God. Amen. To see the angel of the Lord ministering to the people. To see people coming together in love feel the sincerity coming out from the hearts of the people. I believe God was pleased yesterday. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And now, on the third phase, with the word open up to you, with that cornerstone of Joseph perfection laid in your hearts, you are now ready. This has been a meeting of getting ready. It's been a meeting of people becoming newborn babes in Christ. He's getting ready to hone you and form you into the word image. You are ready to receive Pastor Joseph Charity Coleman. Amen. Amen. Who made you ready? The angel dropped down. He made you ready. 
He filled you with the Holy Ghost. He baptized your souls. He broke the shackles of hell that were around your lives. And there's no one, no one that can dissuade you from that fact. Blessed be the... My wife, her voice crying out in the room. And as I looked under the mighty anointing and see her receiving her baptism of the Holy Ghost, oh, what a joy hit me. Amen. Amen. I never wanted to leave that room. It was like being in heaven with angels all around the throne. Brother Joseph Perfection, Charity Coleman, I cannot find the words to say thank you enough for this was truly the effects of your ministry of charity for charity indeed poured out even the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So I am under great expectation to see you step forth on Thursday with Sister Coleman in a glorious, transformed, gorgeous, 21-year-old body standing once again in your pulpit. Amen. Brother Coleman, be, Charity Coleman, be encouraged. Your feet are already over the finish line. Amen. Those are warrior legs over the finish line. And I cannot thank God's prophet and witness, God's prophet and witness, Brother Julian Burnell, enough. I truly see a life sold out to the angel and to the ministry of Joseph Perfection Charity Coleman. Brother Burnell, your enemies are our enemies. Your critics are our critics. Your friends are our friends. Amen. I love that. God bless you, Sister Joanne Venardi Coleman. What a special gift you are to the bride of Jesus Christ. And we say amen. And Sister Rebecca, may God bless you and the entire New York ministry. Brother Andrew Shepherd Prince. Amen. So now that was the husband's testimony. Let's hear Sister Pamela Shepherd Prince and see how what her testimony says. Dear beloved Joseph Perfection, Ark of Honesty, Charity Coleman, thank you for your years of labor that has brought us up to this very day. After yesterday evening's service of July the 5th and upon greeting the brethren in the lobby area, I was looking for my husband. I saw that he was standing outside the minister's room. I walked over to him and he said he was on duty as the Holy Spirit was falling in the minister's room. He knew that it would be a while and he said, I may have to go and eat without him. My mind was no longer on food or anything. All I said was, okay. Thoughts of eating immediately left the second I heard that the Holy Spirit was falling in that room. I wasn't going... Glory to God. Amen. You may be seated. Here is our next testimony before we get to our live testimonies. And this is from Brother Gerard Olivier. Dear Brother Joseph Charity Coleman, even past her honesty, greetings in the precious and matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. We cannot wait and are under great expectation to see you in your beautiful, gorgeous, 21-year-old, transformed body, walking into the sanctuary with Sister Coleman, fully healed and transformed right by your side. May God bless you. Here is a short testimony from my son Nicholas of what he saw last night. And that's one Brother John testimony from my son Nicholas of what he saw last night. And that's one Brother John Conte was preaching. And when the preaching was over and the singing was going forth, here it is. Yesterday, after Brother Conte had finished preaching and the fire was falling, Nicholas was in the front worshiping. Brother Joseph Palomo Jr. was leading in worship and he began to say, Michael is here. Michael is here. While that was going on, Nicholas saw the angel on the platform. The angel, amen, he saw this. The angel was walking behind where the ministers were standing. 
His hands were behind him, behind his back, and he was walking back and forth. He was observing everything that was not going on, and he was nodding approvingly, saying, yes, 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 as he walked back and forth. May God bless you, Brother Nicholas Olivier. God bless you, my Appreciate Brother Gabriel. Let's have him come forth. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Just worship him. Glory to God. Blessed be the name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm so glad to be in this most glorious jubilee. Aren't you tonight? God bless you. I would like to read a portion of the scripture. It's found in Joel 2. It's my favorite passage of the scripture. Joel 2, verse 25. Glory. Hallelujah. 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 It speaks about restoration. Amen. Glory. I will repay you or restore you the years that the swarming locust ate the young locust and destroying locust and the devouring locust, my great army that I sent against you. You will have plenty to eat and be satisfied. Sure. You will praise the name of Yahweh, your God, who has dealt wondrously with you. My people will never again be put to shame. You will know that I am present in Israel, and we'll say here, in the bride, in you, in me, and that I am the Lord your God, and there is no other. And again, my people will never again be put to shame. May Yahweh, our Lord Jesus Christ, bless the reading of his word. You may be seated. Glory to God. Tonight, Michael told me to give a confession, to make a confession, a public confession. Because we realize that we're going out of here. Amen. Amen. And this is a serious time. Friends, this is a time of confession. This is a time where we have to check ourselves to see if everything is in order. Glory to God. You may be seated. So tonight, that's why my testimony is a confession. It's a confession about something that occurred in my life in 1998. 13 years ago, way back. But Michael told me to make a public confession. And I know my portion is coming right after that. Glory to God. Maybe seated. In 1998, a, a serious situation came up in my life, and I have to say that that situation has affected, of course, myself, my family, and my church. The devil had a trap set for me. And by my lack of vigilance, I fell into it. And that situation that 
I'm going to tell you plainly, without going into details, but this situation was lies about Pastor Charity Coleman, lies about his family, his precious family, that have always poured blessings upon blessings upon blessings on myself, my family, and my church. The devil had set a trap, and I fell into it. But I want to say tonight how I am extremely sorry for listening to the devil's lies and not taking up for God's servant, Brother Charity Coleman. Amen. And I know that my pastor, Brother Joseph Charity Coleman, has forgiven me and his family as well. Amen. I should have held for him. I should have stood for the truth and pushed that lie. But thank God, the love of God came down through my pastor and forgave me. The power of forgiveness, brother and sister. Amen. You see, we got to be very careful of what we're saying and even of what we're thinking because it, a seed starts in your mind like it started in Eve's mind. You may be seated. But that, at that time, I did not watch and I did not realize all that it would do, the effects it would, it would have in the years after that. You see that a lie goes around and that lie makes its way through someone, through a family, and then it becomes a big thing. And the first thing you know, the devil has control over that family. But thank God for the grace of God tonight. Amen. I'm here to testify about it. The grace of God. The love of God, the long suffering of God, in God's servant, Pastor Charity Coleman and his precious family. You may be seated. So that lie, that lie, those lies, I should say, made their way through first my daughter-in-law, Rakia, and then she conveyed those lies. You see how the devil is slick? He sees a family in unity in the spirit of God, a church in the spirit of God, and he comes to destroy it. But thank God for the love of God, as I said. That lie, those lies made their way through my daughter-in-law and then through my wife. And then she conveyed them to me, and I accepted them, and I conveyed them to a precious brother in our church, but thank God, that brother refused those lies. Amen. Amen. Brother Michel Carrier, my precious friend and brother Michel Carrier, God bless him. I don't know if he's here tonight. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's why I want to make it a public confession. I know God's servant has forgiven me, as I said, but I realized that I could have been packed out just for that, just for my wrong behavior. We're responsible for what we do, for what we think, for what we say. The angels can hear what we say, what we think. Amen? 
I could have been packed out, judged, and my family as well. And I know my, I'm sorry, and my wife also is sorry, and my daughter-in-law as well. And I know that all of that was in God's plan. But I say this, that I had to suffer for that for 13 years. You sow, you reap what you sow. Amen? That's what Brother Branham said. You'll pay for every mistake you, you make. But don't look at your mistakes. Look at the blood of Jesus Christ. And where is the blood of Jesus Christ? Seven thunders is the blood of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Thank God for the fullness of the blood. Where would I be? Where would we be? You may be seated. I'm almost finished. So as I said, I could have been packed. But I had, of course, to pay for that. And through those years, guilt and condemnation started to get a hold and they wouldn't leave. I almost lost my mind. My whole family was stirred up. And the whole church was stirred up. You see, what it does when you don't stay in your place. But thank God, again, for the love of God. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Guilt, condemnation. Like Brother Truth said, unbelief is, is the devil's weapon. But thank God, amen, I want to give this special testimony tonight of what happened last night. The guilt, as I said, followed me through the years. Sometimes I would feel uh, like it was like come, it was coming, it would come and go. But thank God, I want to say this. Last night, Michael set me free from all guilt, from all condemnation, made me a new man. Michael came down. Michael set me free through God's witness, Brother Julian Brunel. Amen. Spirit spoken words were spoken straight in my soul. And I can never be the same. I can never, never be the same, Brother Gabriel, again. Because Michael set me free. When? Last night. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Brother Julian Brunel. God's witness. God's seer. How we love him. How we thank God for giving a precious help to Brother Coleman on the third phase and to the whole bride. I cannot thank God enough for that. But God made me a free man last night from all guilt. Something was pronounced on me that I can never, 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 never forget. Glory to God. Amen. Blessed be the name. That's my testimony. Glory to God. So, Amen. Glory. And also I want to I want to apologize. I want to ask Brother God's witness, Brother Julian Brunel, to forgive me. Because the seven years he was with us in our church, amen, I did not take up for him. I realized that by my selfish attitude, my wrong attitude, I crushed my precious brother. And I sure want to ask him his forgiveness for that. I'm conscious that this is apostolic times and that God is here. The mind of Christ is here. The intelligence is here. Amen. Playing church is over. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Please forgive me, Brother Julian Brunel. And again, Brother Coleman and his family, Sister Joanne, Sister Becky, please forgive me. And I sure want to thank Sister Joanne and Sister Becky for ministering to my wife last night. 
That's why she is free now. Amen. Amen. The wife and I and my daughter-in-law. Amen. The little church in Montreal is free. Free at last. Glory to God. Free at last. Amen. Now, amen, I know my portion will come. Now I know that the Holy Ghost will come and baptize my soul. Amen. And the whole family. Amen. And the whole church. God bless you. God bless you. My testimony is that I was blind, but now I see. I was bound by thoughts of the mind, questions, concerns that bound my heart for over a year. But I'm no longer bound. Today, July 7th, Jesus Michael set me free. Hallelujah. I didn't deserve it. I did not deserve it. I do not deserve it. But it was God's grace and nothing else. Hallelujah. Church, I said I was bound in my heart because the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. The Bible didn't say, as a man thinketh in his mind, but in his heart. Because we know that the mind is the battlefield. And thoughts come to the mind. They're supposed to come to the mind. Questions, doubts, concerns come to the mind. That's what the devil's battle is. But we're supposed to fight those thoughts. We are supposed to be active. We are supposed to be Christians. We're supposed to be soldiers. We're supposed to fight every filthy thought. Because if we fight those thoughts, they may come to the mind, but they're blasted out. Hallelujah. And church, I did not fight. I reasoned. I tried to figure it out. I did not understand the supernatural. I tried to respect it. But I had questions. I had concerns. And because I didn't battle them, they no longer stayed in my mind, but they dropped into my heart. And when they dropped into my heart, an evil spirit came upon me and began to do war with his spirit. And I was miserable for this past year. I'm telling you right out, I was miserable. I'd come to church, I'd worship God, and I felt like I could get nothing from God. Because it had came into my heart. And it started to become part of my nature. And I was bound, bound, bound by the devil. And I wasn't even supposed to be at these meetings. But God's servant called me this weekend and said, Brother Stephan, do you want to be at those meetings? And my flesh wanted to say no, but my spirit said, yes, Brother Coleman. God's grace, God's grace, God's grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And my testimony is that this is real. This is real. It's more real than my tie. It's more real than my skin. It's more real than my body. This what we feel, what we're experiencing, what we are living in. This is real. Shh. It's real. Hallelujah. But I was bound. And I came in last night. Down came the Holy Spirit. I kept my head bowed. I kept my eyes closed in reverence. And I worshiped as best as I could. And I felt nothing. 
You felt nothing. I felt nothing. I left the service depressed. Told my wife, honey, either this is real or it's not real. And something has to happen or I don't know what's going to happen after these meetings. God's got to do something because I don't know, is this real or is it not real? But God had a plan. Because I was predestinated, Brother Johnny. Predestinated. I can't be lost. I can't be forgotten. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, my. So I came to service this morning, sitting there in the back, trying to be reverent. And all of a sudden, a deacon came and said, please come to the back. I said, okay, here it comes. Amen. And I was invited to be prayed for by my friend, God's servant, Brother Julian Brunel. Hallelujah. And I was so bound by questions and doubts and fears and concerns. And this evil spirit had come over me and I began to say, I had said things about Brother Julian. I had said mean things about him in frustration, not understanding the supernatural and what God was doing in his life. Assisting God's apostle, Brother Coleman. And I was bound. And now he wants to pray for me. Oh my, I was in a place, I didn't know what was up, I didn't know what was down. God's servant, Brother Paloma, began to minister to me. He said, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Brother Coleman, in a 21-year-old restored body, is going to minister to you and answer every one of your questions. But, do you want to be filled? Do you want to be refilled? He said, don't be afraid. God's servant, Brother Julian, was instructed just to pray for you. So don't have any fear. So all the fear started to go away. But I was still bound with this one question. Is this real? So Brother Balomo led me into a small little closet on the side. Teeny tiny little room. Along with Brother Blewett and Brother Peter Meyer. God bless you, Brother Peter. And we went into the room to wait on the Lord. And to wait until God led Brother Julian into the room. I kept my head bowed in reverence. Because I knew something was happening. I didn't understand it. And I still, I'll be honest with you, I still don't understand everything. But I believe. I don't understand everything. But I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. Oh, so there we were. In a little closet. I, over every age, worshiping, saying, come on, bride. Come on, bride. I can see Paul. I can see Irenaeus. I can see Martin, Columba, Luther, Wesley. There's Brother Branham. Shh. Wait a minute. I see Brother Coleman. Oh, oh, here he comes. Here he comes. Hallelujah. He's strong. He's tall. He's healed. He's powerful. Yes. Yes. Believe it. Claim it. Speak it. Visualize it. Make it real tonight. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, praise God. And friends, let me tell you, God's not done with me. He's still breaking me down. But I know that I'm ready for Pastor Charity to come forth healed. Brother Coleman, I am sorry. I am sorry I held back your healing. I am sorry that I caused you pain. But Brother Coleman, I want to tell the critics that now I know why God delayed your healing. He delayed your healing for me. He did it for me. He did it for me. And now, Brother Coleman, I'm ready for you to come forth. Strong, strong, strong. To begin to hone me, to begin to cut me, to begin to shape me, to begin to help me to be formed into the word image. Do you believe it? 
Hallelujah. This is not the old brother Stephen. This is a new creature in Christ Jesus. And I have news for the devil. We are still laughing in your face. Come on and laugh with me. Satan. Ha, ha, ha. Jesus has rescued me. See, there's a feeling in the air that God is everywhere. For his resurrection power, it is me. And I am walking by faith, and I am living in love, and I am covered, covered, covered by his blood. You see, Jesus has rescued me. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Jesus, Lord, to me. Jesus, Lord, to me, Master, Savior. Yes, the day, the day before, He is all, He is the same. There's no reason to doubt. God can do it again. God can do it again. There's no reason to doubt. God can do it again. Yesterday and the day before. Glory! You all know. This is your night. This is it. This is 07-07-2011. God will not fail you. Let me speak to you freshly. Could it be? Could it be that God wanted everybody in this sanctuary to have a faith that a 21 year old would stand here tonight? Come on now! Let me say something. Could it be that the handwriting on the wall wanted you all to have a special faith on 07 07 2011? Why? Because what if the same faith it took to believe? That a 21 year old will be here, just wait. That a 21 year old will be here. What if that's the same faith you needed to receive the Holy Ghost? Come on now! Come on now! Yes! Yes! 
there's not a devil in here wondering where's brother Coleman because the Holy Ghost is in him and you know he's gonna be here what did the handwriting what did the handwriting speak you would go back home worshiping Messiah those of you that receive the Holy Ghost you have become worshiping Messiah All God was looking for on 07, 07, 2011 was a bride with a perfect faith. Now, 07, 07, 2011. God predestinated it to be Thursday. So the song you were just singing said yesterday, which was Wednesday, and the day before, which was Tuesday. And let me tell you, he poured out on Tuesday. He poured out on Wednesday. And he what is the song? God can do it again. So let's say it. Start playing it, musicians. God can do it again. the common they don't doubt it come on let Satan hear you let him hear you do it again. friends you have never been this way 
at least not on this earth, but before the foundation of the world, you were like this. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Do you feel the sweet friends? I haven't even begun. And the anointing that was here last night is already all over you. I know. You didn't want to see that one. Yet you came here in brotherly kindness. And when you walked in here, what was the difference of this convention? There was angels at each of these doors. And they stripped you of your hatred for one another. Why? Because that hatred had to be out of you before Joseph, Charity, Coleman could stand here and release the dynamics to your mechanics. Glory to God. Well, I think this is the first time I've ever said you may be seated. <laughs> Glory to God. So if you'd like, you may be seated. I want to say, God bless you, Brother Coleman. <laughs> Joseph Charity Coleman. I want to say, God bless you. I want to say, Brother Coleman, I know that as Stephen went free, the reason that you had to wait was demolished. And I believe that the bride believes with me that it sounds appropriate that tomorrow night is July 8th. And tomorrow night would be the eighth service. And eight is back to the beginning. So do you believe you will see Joseph Charity Coleman on the eighth standing right here? Then I say, visualize, visualize, visualize. Brother Coleman, I have a testimony for you right now. The bride just had a vision of you in this pulpit tomorrow night. You wanted a vision? There's a vision. There's a heavenly vision. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated if you'd like. Well, I do have a title. And the title is... The stone of power rejected by Adam through disobedience has become the headstone of the corner in New York City. Come on now. And I have an inspiration. Go wash 
in the pool of Siloam in Harrisburg 2011. You were blind, but now you see. You are washing in the Holy Spirit even now. Well, Brother Julia, what was the clay? What was the clay that came upon our eyes? The handwriting on the wall. And now, the hardest, glory to God, the hardest cases, the hardest cases of unbelief came here and washed, washed, washed in the Holy Spirit. So be very encouraged. Glory to God. My God, Brother Coleman, I feel free. Now, I would like to share with you that back home, the angel gave me this message. And there's things I'm going to speak that I have never heard of outside of the angel of the Lord. So you are believers. So tonight, things are going to be spoken a certain way. And your predestination inside will be stirred up and say, that's right. So let me start by this. What was Adam created from? But dust, dirt. Right? Okay. Then I ask you, if you take dirt and rub it on your face, what is your skin color going to be? Come on now! What is your skin color going to be? You gonna be a colored man. Come on now. It's your Bible. Now, have you ever seen, have you ever seen white dirt? Have you ever seen beige dirt? Have you ever seen brown dirt? I got you because some of you said no, but the dirt is brown. Just so you know, glory. Hallelujah. Now I have a next question. Does your Bible say, my God, you all look like you're having fun. You all look like you're having fun. You're having fun. Hallelujah. Now I have a next question. Does your Bible say, my God, you all look like you're having fun. You all look like you're having fun. You're having fun. Going back to the Bible. Now, does your Bible say that Adam was a little baby? Does he say he was a little boy? No. But Adam had to be mature. Because God poured all that he was into Adam. So is it safe to say that Adam who by now we now know was a colored man, was a 21-year-old.
Glory! Brother Julian, are you saying that God's original plan was to pour all that he was into a colored man that was 21 years old? So the dynamics to the bride's mechanics was supposed to come out of the mouth of a colored man that is 21 years old. Then we're on the same page. We read the same Bible. Then I see that it is not hard for you all to visualize a 21 year old colored Joseph Charity Coleman. Hey, yes. Oh, we're gonna have a time. We're gonna have a time. Hallelujah. Is that why the 1900s demons from the pit of hell came on this earth with a prejudiced spirit? Devils, the ministers didn't want to go near Brother Coleman? You mean that's why he suffered more than you will ever know? He couldn't sit in certain seats in restaurants, in the bus. Every time someone looked at him, they looked down upon him. But that never stopped Joseph Charity Coleman. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise Him. So now, as we go back, that you now know who your pastor is and the journey God chose for him. Then let us continue on this journey. I told you you never heard this before. Do you want to hear some more mysteries? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now Adam had the voice of the archangel. In other words, Adam had the voice of honesty. And Adam, you, if you just visualize, would speak. And God would say, now, call a giraffe a giraffe. And he did. Because honesty had to obey. Then he prayed some more. And was told, speak to this mountain to be moved over there. And with honesty and obedience, he spoke it and he did. So we have now established that Adam had the voice of the archangel. Adam represented God, El Elah Elohim. But I want to say this. Adam wanted a child. He wanted a son. And he prayed like he prayed every other thing. But God did not answer him right away. So he couldn't speak his son. Your pastor labored. You couldn't even get rid of your unbelief. 
Yet your pastor's ministry was specially designed to destroy all unbelief. That is a sabotage message. Brother Julian, you look angry. I'm not angry. I'm just broken. Well, you're off with your unbelief. And you sleep next to your unbelief. Your pastor's not even sleeping. Now catch a burden. Well, you begin to eat with your unbelief. Your pastor has no case buds to eat. And while you're free to do whatever you want, your pastor is bound. He can't walk. You're healthy. And those of you that are sick, if you would just get rid of your unbelief, you'd be healed. And if God knows your testimony, which he knows all things, then if you are living a sanctified life, then God's going to heal you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Now, I don't even have to ask this, but I'll say it anyway. Do you know that Michael is here? This anointing is Michael. And he will be with us all week. Awaiting the arrival of a 21-year-old gorgeous manifestation. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You may be seated. There's a song that we're going to sing that was given to our precious brother Julian Brunel by the angel of the Lord himself. It was sang to him by the angel and it's entitled The Confession. And if this is your confession this evening, as we sing this song, you just shout and rejoice. Because the hour is here now. May the Lord richly bless you. My heart is crying out. That Michael is here He stands before me with sword in his hand For he cut the world from me That honesty could flow and reign within My good ground's been prepared by a fivefold ministry it has redeemed my soul and set me free. Now I know that I know that I was lost, but now I'm found. He's not coming, he's here. He's been calling us out, out of a world of deception and into his arms. He's not coming, he's here. By his word we're redeemed For the open word identifies That Michael is here Oh, Michael is here Michael is here Michael is here Oh, yes, he's here Oh, Michael is here Michael is here Michael is here is what it's all about the seven thunders uttered and abolished all doubt for an apostle lived the life for all the bride to see and now we 
we know that all this pain will be released, released, released. He's not coming, he's here. He's been calling us now. Out of a world of deception and into his arms. He's not coming, he's here. By his word we're redeemed. For the open word identifies that Michael is here. She's ready to receive an adopted son and his powerful ministry, the fullness of charity. For the lost coin has been found. He's not coming, he's here. He's been calling us now out of a world of deception. And into his arms He's not coming, he's here By his word we're redeemed For the open word identifies That Michael is here Michael is here Michael is here Michael is here Shout of praise. Glory to God. Come on now. Michael is here. Michael is here. Michael is here. With his sword drawn, I can testify that he has set me free. I can testify that he has used every chain, every shackle. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord together in the face of every devil in the face of unbelief michael is here michael is here glory to god oh he's not coming he's here he's been calling us out out of the world of deception Michael is here. Michael is here. Michael is here. Michael is here. 